Good morning. My name is Pastor Evelyn Craighead, a bond servant of Jesus Christ, and I would like to welcome you to the Feeding House Ministries, a teaching ministry that focuses on your soul and your eternal destiny, a ministry that uncompromisingly teaches the truth of God's word. And our scripture teaching this morning comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, and I will be reading verses 17 through 24 from the New King James Version. But as God has distributed to each one, as the Lord has called each one, so let him walk. And so I ordained in all the churches. Was anyone called while circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Was anyone called while uncircumcised? Let him not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing. But keeping the commandments of God is what matters. Let each one remain in the same calling in which he was called. Were you called while a slave? Do not be concerned about it, but if you can be made free, rather use it. For he who was called in the Lord while a slave is the Lord's freed man. Likewise, he who is called while free is Christ's slave. You were bought at a price. Do not become slaves of men. Brethren, let each one remain with God in that state in which he was called. My subject for this morning is your lot in life as a Christian. The message of the gospel is the most glorious message imaginable because the gospel proclaims that true believers are set free by Christ, Amen. free from sin, mm -hmm. death, and condemnation. Yes. The gospel proclaims that true believers can have abundance of life now and throughout all of life. Mm -hmm. The gospel proclaims that true believers will inherit eternal life, yes. that true believers have the privilege of ruling and reigning with Christ forever. The gospel proclaims that the Lord Jesus Christ will return and that God is no respecter of persons, yes. that all people are equal before him. Amen. The gospel proclaims that the sin and corruption of this world will be done away with mm -hmm. and God will make a new heaven and earth. And the gospel is revolutionary. It's radical. It's groundbreaking. It's life changing. Amen. And as a believer, it completely changes the status of your life, both now and forever. Because believers are given the hope of everything for which people dream of. And it was the revolutionary nature of the gospel that caused some believers in Corinth to begin breaking their social ties, changing their professions, breaking their religious ties, and cutting loose from family and public obligations mm -hmm. and of course this kind of behavior disrupted the lives of all who surrounded the Corinthian believers because some of the believers were just breaking loose from everything for example some believers reason that if this world is sinful and corrupt then a believer must have nothing to do with the world nor with those who live in this world therefore some believers broke their social ties Others reason that if believers aren't to be unequally yoked together with unbelievers, then they should separate from their unbelieving spouses. Still others thought that they needed to do away with all the rituals and duties of religion because they were saved by faith, not by a religion. Thus, believer after believer was questioning their lot in life, mm -hmm. becoming dissatisfied, feeling that they had been dealt a terrible hand in life. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they had to change their lives no matter who it affected or hurt. And some believers were changing their jobs, their religion, and their friends. Some were even breaking up their families in order to change their lot in life. And this passage of scripture deals with the believer's lot in life. Your status, your condition, your circumstances, and your relationships throughout society. And in this message today, <clears throat> which is a much needed message, there are four facts about your lot in life as a Christian. Verse 17 says, but as God has distributed to each one, as the Lord has called each one, so let him walk, and so I ordain in all the churches. Fact number one, God calls people from all lots in life, from all conditions, and from all levels of society. 
But you must accept whatever situation the Lord has put you in. You must continue on as you were when God first called you. Christ makes changes from within and he calls people from all walks of life. While some changes are made in behavior and attitudes, as believers there are some changes you shouldn't make. For example, you shouldn't change marriage partners and don't even try to change jobs unless the job is dishonoring to God. Mm. Instead, accept whatever situation the Lord has put you in and continue on as you were when God first called you because God can use his faithful followers in all areas of life. As a believer, both God and Christ are involved in your lot in the world and it's God himself who has distributed gifts and abilities to every person. As a believer, it's the Lord Jesus Christ himself who has called you to serve him and his cause on earth, no matter where you are. Yeah. Therefore, walk where you're using your gifts and abilities for Christ and his cause. For we walk by faith, not by sight. It's Christ who calls you to be a witness for him right where you live and work, unless you're engaged in some activity that's sinful and illegitimate. Amen. Your lot in life, your circumstances, your position, your social standing, employment, or your marital status has no bearing on Christ saving you. Mm. Therefore, your lot in life is to have no bearing on whether or not you walk in Christ because as a believer, you are to walk in Christ no matter where you are Amen. because it isn't your conditions and circumstances that are to determine your walk in life. Yeah. On the contrary, as a believer, you're given the power of Christ to walk through the circumstances of life no matter how severe and difficult they may be. However, as a believer, this doesn't mean that you are not to better yourself and your condition in life. Yeah. Neither does it mean that it's necessary for you to stay where you are. It simply means that as a believer, you are to serve Christ no matter what your lot in life is. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 15 says, so be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Verses 18 through 19 says, Was anyone called while circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Was anyone called while uncircumcised? Let him not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing. But keeping the commandments of God is what matters. Fact number two. Religious distinctions do not matter. And there were both Gentile and Jewish converts in the Corinthian church. But this wasn't Paul's advice just to the church in Corinth, but it was his rule for all churches. Amen. For instance, Paul wrote that a man who was circumcised before he became a believer should not try to re reverse it. He shouldn't become uncircumcised, even though the ceremony of circumcision was an important part of the Jews' relationship with God. Mm -hmm. In fact, before Christ came, circumcision was commanded by God for those who claimed to be his followers. Yeah. But after Christ's death and resurrection, circumcision was no longer necessary. Galatians chapter 5 verse 6 says For when we place our faith in Christ Jesus There is no benefit in being circumcised or being uncircumcised What is important is faith expressing itself in love Amen. Paul pointed out that in God's kingdom Circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing mm -hmm. but keeping the commandments of God is what matters Amen. Jewish Christians didn't need to reverse their circumcisions and Gentile Christians didn't need to reverse their circumcised being circumcised instead they should stay exactly where they are when they first became believers because an outward change will make no difference Amen. all that matters is the inner change therefore they should focus on keeping the commandments of God God, desiring to conform their heart and will in obedience to God. Mm -hmm. But as always, some of the Jewish converts wanted to continue practicing some of the ceremonial laws of their formal religion, just like people want to do today. While others felt that form and rituals were useless and they wanted nothing to do with them. And of course, the Gentile converts certainly didn't want to 
anything to do with Judaism because it was the religion of a despised people and the gospel made rituals unnecessary. And apparently the issue had become a serious matter in the church, but the answer to the issue of form and ritual is direct and to the point. External rituals and forms in religion do not matter. Amen. They don't save you and neither do they make you acceptable or unacceptable to God. What really matters is the heart, the keeping of God's commandments. Romans chapter 2 verse 25 says, For circumcision is indeed profitable if you keep the law, if you keep the word of God. But if you are a breaker of the law, if you are a breaker of the word of God, your circumcision has become uncircumcision. The believer who pleases God is the believer who loves and trusts the Lord so much that he obeys God. Mm -hmm. He trusts God to such a degree that he knows that what God says is the very best thing to do. Amen. He loves the Lord so much that he longs to please the Lord by doing exactly what the Lord says. John chapter 14 verse 21 says, Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my father will love them and I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. As a believer, you should be a Christian wherever you are yes. and you can do God's work and demonstrate your faith anywhere. Yes. If you became a Christian after marriage and your spouse isn't a believer, just remember you don't have to be married to a Christian to live for Christ. So don't assume that you're in the wrong place or that you're stuck with the wrong person. You may be just where God wants you to be. Therefore, you should continue on as you were when God called you. Amen. Verses 20 to 23 says, Let each one remain in the same calling in which he was called. Were you called while a slave? Do not be concerned about it. But if you can be made free, rather use it. For he who was called in the Lord while a slave is the Lord's freed man. Likewise, he who is called while free is Christ's slave. You were bought at a price. Do not become slaves of men. Fact number three, vocations and social conditions do not matter. And the importance of this passage of scripture is stressed again. Let each one remain in the same calling in which he was called. As a Christian believer, you're to know that you can live for Christ in the most horrible conditions, even the condition of slavery. And in early Christianity, this matter posed a critical problem because there were many converts who were slaves. Their time belonged to their master. Therefore, they were often unable to attend church services and serve Christ as much as they wished. But again, scripture drives this point home. Serve Christ wherever you are. As a slave, if you can secure your freedom, secure it. And then serve Christ to the fullest. But in the meantime, serve Christ where you are. And as a slave, you can serve where you are because you're the Lord's freed man. Mm -hmm. And the believer who's freed and called or saved is the servant of Christ. Amen. Therefore, in the eyes of the Lord, as a slave, you are equal to all other people. And as a slave, if you're faithful where you are, you will receive an equal reward. You may not be free to attend church, and participate in religious activities as much as other believers. But if you're faithful to Christ by doing the best job and bringing the best witness, being the best witness you can be, then you're just as acceptable to God as the most active member of the church. Amen. And just for the record, God measures the faithfulness of believers to Christ, not certain kinds of activities. As a believer, wherever you are, your lot in life, your vocation and your social condition in life does not matter. Amen. But notice why. And it's because believers are bought with a price. We're bought with the blood of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Therefore, we are his servants and witnesses all over the world. As believers, wherever we are, we are bearing testimony. We are reaching every segment of so and social level of society. The uttermost part of the earth, 
no matter how enslaved and impoverished it is, must be reached and it must have believers who can witness for Christ. Mm -hmm. Because this is the only way people all over the world will ever know about the new heavens and earth where believers will be exalted to rule and reign with Jesus Christ. Yeah. Therefore, we are to live and serve Christ in all the requirements and duties laid on us by others while we are slaves on this earth. Amen. Because our day of redemption and exaltation is coming. There is the day of inspection. The building of the church will be inspected. And the day of inspection, inspection is sure to come. Mm -hmm. And the building was started in order for it to be finished. And when it's finished, the inspector, the Lord Jesus Christ himself, will come to either approve it or disapprove it. Yes. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 7 to 8 says, so that you come short in no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Every person's work, the work of every believer will be manifested, displayed, and exhibited. Mm -hmm. It will be declared, proclaimed, and announced. No believer will be exempt. Every single believer will stand before the Lord Jesus Christ to have your works tried and tested by the Lord. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Every single work will be tested and the truth and quality of your work will be exposed, which is a reference to the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. But how will you be tested? Mm -hmm. And shockingly, you will be tested by fire. Mm -hmm. And in the Bible, fire is constantly used as a symbol of judgment and terrible trial. The building is to be set on fire and only the permanent materials of the spirit will survive the mm -hmm. fire. All the materials of this earth will be burned, consumed, and gone forever. Amen. But the, believers, the believer whose works survive the fire will be rewarded greatly, so greatly, that it just explodes the human mind. Mm. Listen to the rewards that Satan, with his deceptive tactics, mm -hmm. tries to rob believing Christians of. The rewards of dealing with our nature and our state of being. The rewards of being adopted as a son of God, of being made blameless and harmless. Yeah. The reward of eternal life. Yeah. The reward of an enduring substance. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 34 says, For you had compassion on me and my chains, and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. You have the reward of being given a glorious body, eternal glory, mm -hmm. honor and peace, eternal rest and peace, and the blessings of the Lord. Amen. You have the reward of knowing Jesus Christ and the reward of durable riches and righteousness. Mm -hmm. You have the reward of being made priest, of being given a crown of incorruption, a crown of righteousness, a crown of life, and a crown of glory. But there are other rewards that Satan tries to rob you of with this deceptive deceptive tactics, rewards dealing with work and position and rule, mm -hmm. the reward of being made exalted beings, yeah. the reward of being made ruler over many things, of being given the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. a position of rule and authority and eternal responsibility and joy, yeah. the reward of being given rule and authority over cities, the reward of being given thrones, the reward of privilege and reigning forever, yeah. and the reward and privilege of surrounding the throne of God and being made priests and kings. But that's not all yeah. Satan tries to rob Christian believers of with his deceptive tactics. There are other rewards. The rewards dealing with your inheritance or wealth. Mm -hmm. The reward of being made an heir of God. Yeah. The reward of being given an in corruptible inheritance, the reward of being given the blessings of the Lord, the reward of durable riches and righteousness, unsearchable riches yeah. and treasures in heaven. But the believer whose works 
perished in the fire will suffer loss. He will be saved, but he will suffer the loss of all the rewards appearing and looking like a burned out building. Mm -hmm. And this point is directed to all professions. As a slave, if you're to serve Christ faithfully where you are, mm -hmm. other believers are to serve Christ faithfully, no matter what their profession is. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 5 through 7 says, Bond servants, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling in sincerity of heart as to Christ, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men. As slaves of Jesus Christ, you are to obey your earthly masters with deep respect and fear. Mm -hmm. You are to serve them as sincerely as you would serve Christ. You are to obey your earthly matters in the same way children are to obey their parents. Mm -hmm. As slaves, you are to obey the commands and desires of your masters. This is your duty because of the authority of the master. Mm -hmm. And slaves who have become Christians need to understand how your new faith affects your service to human masters. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you are advised as slaves that you are to treat your earthly masters with deep respect and fear. In other words, you are to have an attitude of reverence and honor. You are to have a desire to do what's right. And as a slave, you've been set free from slavery to sin, but you haven't been freed from serving your earthly masters. And the word earthly distinguishes the earthly masters, the slave owners, from the ultimate master, God himself. Amen. As slaves of Jesus Christ, God wants us to fulfill our responsibilities in this world as if we are serving Christ. Yeah. Even more than that, as slaves, we are actually rendering obedience to Christ when we obey our earthly masters. Amen. And such service should be accomplished sincerely. It should be accomplished with meaning, without pretense <clears throat> or evil motivation. Therefore, we are to do like verse 24 says, Brethren, let each one remain with God in that state in which he was called. Fact number four, be faithful in your lot on this earth. As a believer, being faithful in your lot on earth can't be stressed enough. But this doesn't mean that you are not to better your lot in life. Yeah. It means that as a believer, you are to serve Christ faithfully where you are without moaning and grumbling about your lot in life. Yeah. But notice the emphasis is on the believer. Let the believer remain with God. Mm -hmm. It's the believer who's to walk and remain in a consciousness of God all day long, every day, no matter where you are or what your circumstances are. Yeah. You have been saved to fellowship with God and to serve the Lord Jesus Christ as a witness to all other people. Colossians chapter 2 verse 6 says, as you have therefore received Jesus Christ, the Lord, so walk with him. God calls people from all lots of life, from all conditions, and from all levels of society. And religious distinctions don't matter, and vocations and social conditions don't matter. What matters is for you to be faithful in your lot in life. So whatever situation you were in when you became a believer, whatever situation God found you in, you should stay there in your new relationship with God. Just keep in mind that God can use people from all areas of life. Because believers have been set free from sin and you're free to live for God, you shouldn't feel pride or shame in your lot in life. Instead, you should serve God from that position, seeking to share the gospel with those who might not otherwise hear it. And so again, remember the facts. The question is about the Christian and your lot in life. And God calls people from all lots in life, from all conditions in life, and from all levels of society. Just keep in mind that religious distinctions don't matter and external rituals don't matter. What matters is the heart the keeping of God's commandments. Mm -hmm. And vocations and social conditions don't matter. Mm -hmm. Even the most horrible conditions such as slavery does not matter. The believer's high exaltation, the believer's happiness and joy is to be enslaved to Christ and purchased by Christ. But you must be faithful in your lot while here on earth. 
This is what matters to God. This is your lot in life as a Christian believer. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for teaching us today to stay right where we were when, we first, when you first called us. And so now, Father God, I just ask that you would just bless us and keep us. That you would make your face shine upon us and you would be gracious to us and that you would lift up your countenance upon us and give us your peace. Father God, we thank you for your word today and as we prepare to leave this place, but never your presence. I ask you to let us be beacons of light for you in this lost world, that when the world sees us, they really see your son Jesus. And they may just ask, what must I do to be saved? We thank you, Father God, for not only calling us, but for choosing us. But most of all, we ask that your will be done in our lives in this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.